That's a tip. Put it in your back pocket. Veins. I've been driving this train Years in this lane There's no stopping this flame Cause I came to the Hey y'all It's your girl Lakia Shante And I am back again with another Chick Chat video Okay ladies This video is going to be about How and how to Keep your relationship spicy While you are either married Or in a relationship with children now, before I get started, I do want to say one of my motivational quotes that I always say at the beginning of every video. So, are you guys ready for it? Okay. So, today's quote is, once your parents, your marriage matters more, not less. Because now, other people are counting on you. Now, that hits home. Because once you start having children, these kids are counting on your relationship to work. So being apart or like getting a divorce or breaking up, it does not only affect you, it affects your kids. So one thing that is so important is to make sure you keep your relationship spicy because at the end of the day, if neither one of you guys are interested in each other, it's guaranteed not to work, okay? You guys are gonna look elsewhere, want something else. And not to say that even if you're trying to keep your relationship spicy, the other person won't look elsewhere. But what I'm trying to say is it's very important to try new things after you've been in a relationship for a very long time. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. So the first thing I wanna say is before we even continue, you want to make sure that you and your partner still are in love with each other, okay? In love, not just I love you, you know what I'm saying? Because relationships, you can love a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? I love my mom, I love my friends, I love, you know, I love a lot of people. So at the end of the day, you need to make sure that you are still in love. If you guys are not in love, that poses as a problem as far as spicing up the relationship. Spicing up the relationship won't work if you guys are not in love. So the first thing to keep your marriage spicy is sexual intimacy. Now, as you've been together with somebody and then you guys start having kids, it's a little bit different from when you guys got together without kids. Like for instance, my husband and I, we used to be like wild animals back in the day, if you know what I mean. But as we start to have kids, our daily tasks change. So now our main focus is making sure the kids were good, you know, they're fed, they're bathed, they're, you know, meeting all of their needs that we kind of didn't have time to have like that intimacy because we're busy. We have so much going on. We work amongst the host of other things. So keeping that sexual intimacy alive is very important. No matter what time of night it is, maybe tapping your partner on the shoulder like, hey, like, let's get it in. Or like your, your, your spouse is at work and they're on their way home. And, you know, maybe just put on some lingerie, you know, get the kids together, make sure they have their baths, make sure they have their food, um, put them on a movie in the room. You shut your door, you be on the bed in your lingerie and just wait for your husband to come home. Like things like that, like spices up the sexual intimacy in your relationship or even Y'all are driving in the car. God knows where you're going. Maybe pulling over and having a little fun in the car. Like that is spicing up the sexual intimacy for your spouse. It makes the relationship fun. So you never want to lose the fun in a relationship. Even though you have kids, you want to make sure you and your partner are still having fun the way you guys did when you first met before the kids. So that's just one way to like keep it spicy. Another way to keep it spicy is to take trips. Now, I understand not everybody has a babysitter. Like, my friends, I'll invite them and stuff all the time. And they'll be like, yeah, we don't have no babysitter. Like, lucky for me, my mother is, like, on the older side. So she's still that old grand, the 1990 grandparents that want you. They'll keep you if your parent would let them. Like, they want you. My mother wants to see my, my kids. So... I always have a babysitter, which I am super, super blessed for mommy because I always have a babysitter. But not everybody does, okay? And I understand that. Now we're at a day and age where 50 is looking like the new 30 and 60 is looking like the new 40. You know what I'm saying? Grandparents is out here looking snatched 
and doing the damn thing. And I understand. They want to get, they want to be Stella got a brew back or Steve Harvey pimping it. You know what I'm saying? They want to have fun too. Grandma got to have a life too. Grandpa got to have a life too. So I understand. So in some cases, you cannot take trips. In some cases, you're not able to take trips alone. Like you have to bring your kids. But it is important that you get away and change the scenery. Sometimes relationships are might seem boring or just like the same because you're just seeing the same thing every day. Like you come home from work, you maybe take a shower, maybe cook dinner, you know, watch a movie and you're doing this every single day. The cycle is the same every single day. Now, when the cycle is the same, sometimes that causes for disruption in a relationship because people are bored. So I am a firm believer of taking trips, going out. If you can't go out of the country because you have your kids with you, go 45 minutes away, maybe an hour or two, and just relax. Find a way to do something that involves your kids if you don't have a babysitter, but still have that time to like sneak away, change the scenery, see something different. My husband loves to do camping. So when we don't have a babysitter, We'll go camping. It's something that, you know, you can spend time with your kids in the daytime. But when you get them kids down in the bed, you can go outside. You maybe go around the fireplace, talk, like, you know, just do different things that you're not normally doing. So that's another way to just spice it up in their relationship. Another thing, which a lot of people don't feel like this spices up a relationship probably, but is so important. And that is effective communication. Now, I am not one to tell anybody what to do in a relationship because I'm working on myself as well. Like, when it comes down to effective communication, I'm always the rah, 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 rah one, okay? Like, my homegirl tell me I'm this. Like, I'm always doing this. So, I'm working on that. But I have found that when me and my husband do have, like, positive communication, we're able to get over our differences and like work it out. So, baby, I didn't like that you did that. Honey, I liked when you do that. Baby, I'm sorry for doing that. You know what I'm saying? And vice versa. Being able to sit down and communicate with each other effectively is a way of spicing up a relationship because you get to like, there's so many things that I can tell you has improved my marriage just from telling my husband, what I didn't like, what I do like, or my husband telling me what he didn't like, what he did like. It's just certain things that really helped us be better people together. So make sure you're having some effective communication. I know it's not spicy, but in a way, like it really is. It's going to keep your relationship solid. Another way to keep your relationship spicy is take time out for one another. I am firsthand here to tell you, when you have children taking that time out for, for each other, it is not easy. Like I said earlier, you're just so wrapped up with everything that you have to do for your kids and for the household that you're not taking time out with each other to really embrace one another. I am a firm believer of if you can't get out because of your kids, do everything that you could have done out in your house. So for one, I love to go to dinner, but I don't have a babysitter all of the time because my mother does not live in the same city as me. So in some cases, I'll go to the grocery store, I'll get like a nice steak, maybe some asparagus, some like mashed potatoes, and I'll cook it and I'll do like a candlelight dinner um on my kitchen table with like some flowers nice plates um utensils and me and my husband just sit down and we eat and we talk and we chat of course you know you want to get the kids down you know feed them maybe some finger food some chicken nuggets get them out the way real quick bring them to the room put on a good movie they've never seen before one thing i've learned when it comes to kids Never put on a video that they've seen before because they're going to constantly bug you, bug you, bug you, bug you. You got to put on something they never, ever seen. That's how you get them quiet. That's a tip. Put it in your back pocket. But yeah, put them on a little video. Put the candles down. Put your plate down. And just like have that one-on-one -on -one dinner with your husband. Bubble baths. 
when I go out of town, I love to get the rooms that have like a jacuzzi or like a nice size bubble or nice size bathtub because me and my husband love to sit down and embrace one another in the bathtub. There's nothing like sitting in a tub full of hot water with bubbles and you know your spouse is behind you and you're in front of him and you guys are just chatting about life like that's the time me and my husband take to talk about what we want out of life like our future like our future endeavors like we both have we have been two businesses together so like entrepreneurship how can we grow our businesses these are things that we are talking about together like in the bathtub like it it's beautiful you have to give it a try it definitely is spontaneous and it spices things up that's why it's so important to take that one-on-one -on -one time for one another because I know I appreciate that bubble bath time. I appreciate that dinner. I appreciate the one-on-one -on -one time that we get to spend because we don't have it all of the time. So those are like things that I admire. I'm going to tell you guys a story. So before me and my husband had our kids, like we were like... Letty two titties. Like, that's what my husband calls it. Letty two titties. We just were lit, okay? We were going out. We were having just the best times of our life. We didn't have a care in the world. When we did have our kids, um, our relationship kind of hit like a standstill because it just was different. It wasn't what we were normally used to. So, I remember this conversation vividly. We had to sit down at one point and discuss, like, are we in this for the long haul or are we not going to be together? And we both decided that we're in this for the long haul. So, from that day forward, we tried to make it so that we're, no matter what, we're making each other happy. Even if we have a moment in time where we're not happy, we try to get out of it. We try to speak to each other effectively and let each other know what we're feeling that way we can handle the situation and move past it. So from there on out, it's, it's just been great. Like we have our ups and downs. Of course, any relationship does. We're not perfect. We're not ha 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 happy go lucky all day. We're just not all the time. We're not, but we do have certain things that we promise each other from a back in the day that we were going to do all the time to ensure that we made it for our children, but not only for them, for us. Okay, y'all, so my time is up. I enjoyed you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Like, I wanna know you guys are out there listening to me. I want you guys to even put in some, give some input on what you guys want me to talk about. I am open to just creating content to what you wanna hear. So just let me know. Bye.